Hi, Nina Zavala here. This is a place to talk about spiritual personality typing. This week on the blog, I'm talking about travel and how a vacation destination can mirror your personality type. So I'm going to get into this. I'm going to look at how this works and how travel triggers can be an indicator of personality traits that need some attention, that may be unhealthy. And vacation can trigger that. So I'm going to look at that. I also wanted you to know that I have incorporated some session work to help you um, really pinpoint your, your travel personality type before you embark on a vacation. I mean, we all need what travel can give us. You know, that stillness time, intentional time to, to look, to relook at ourselves in a different place. And so many of us going through this pandemic um, have really become disjointed, um, so even angry. You know, we're questioning ourselves, we're questioning everything. So before you embark on a vacation, my thought was, why not really know your travel personality type? You know, your desires and your wants, what's gonna fill your soul up and really what, and some triggers, you know, what will trigger you? So if you have all that knowledge beforehand, it really makes choosing a vacation easier, you know, so you won't get into that Google paralysis of, you know, look up a beach vacation, there's like 7 million choices, it's ridiculous. Um, so it kind of takes some of that, that anxiety out of the equation. And so if you're interested in that, you know, just get on my calendar, um, on my website, you'll see it. There's places you can do that. Um, but before we go on to that, I'd like to talk to you very briefly about a comment I had about my last week's video, um, entitled Inventing Anna. And what I did is I looked at Anna's personality type. And I'm not going to do a spoiler alert. I want you to go read it if you haven't. I think it's very interesting. But the question I got was, if Anna was a different type, would she have been more successful? And I have to say no to that because your type is your type. Um, how it can be more successful is if it's healthy. And if you've joined and realized that the non-physical aspects of yourself, your soul self, that's guided by divine intelligence, has been activated. Because when you activate your soul self, all those divine messages and inspirations become actionable and are expressed through your personality type. So in Venting Anna, she was out of touch with her personality type. And so she did things in the quest for, it, for in her mind of making it, of becoming something her father could appreciate. You know, I'm not gonna do spoiler alerts because if you, you have to watch the series, but a lot of the stuff that she does is tied back to childhood. It's about proving yourself. It's about that external stuff. And she didn't take the time to go inward and, and, and figure out her personality type and her traits. And how when you awaken that to that knowledge, your soul now can come through and, and lead you through inspired actions. Yes, you're gonna make mistakes. We're all human, we're human beings here on the physical plane. We're here to learn. So mistakes are just challenges and mistakes and what I call them triggers are part of your soul work. It's just who you are. Whether you're in business, whether you're traveling, whether you're in a relationship, it's just all part of it. It's what makes you you. You know, you don't learn, when we, I know this is cliche, but you don't learn when everything's going rosy. You just don't, everything goes along, you know, there's no hiccups, you don't stop. Nothing stops you to help you look, to help you go inside. So, really good question. Because a lot of people want to look at that, you know, a lot of people want to look at that, you know, if I was different, could I be? Well, no, if you knew your personality type and your soul were, were in, in union with each other, had that partnership, had a healthy partnership, that's when things work. You know, 
So the question was valid because would Anna have been more successful if she had another personality type? Anna would have been more successful if her personality type was healthy. Well, let's just look at it that way. You know, and we're not taught to do that, honestly. Uh, I'm just gonna do a real quick caveat and then I'll get on to our, our this week's blog. But you know, we are so told, just change yourself. You need to become this, this, and this. People try to rebrand us. This is kind of gets into what I'm talking about today. Um, they'll try to rebrand you to become something that you're not. And that's when things start, start crumbling. For me, I had a seven year life tsunami because I was totally rebranded into something I was not, not, not. So yeah, that's, I hope that answers your questions. If you have any follow up questions on that, you know, please put them in the comments. I'd love to answer your questions. In fact, I'd like to do just, I'd like to get on here one day and just do a live and do Q and A. Um, I'm working up to that. I need, um, you know, I need, I need comments from you guys. And I, I love, to, I love talking about this stuff and I talk about it all day long. Um, Cause I really want you, the goal here is to help you figure yourself out, to help you re-see yourself you know, as the god or goddess that you are, because we all are. We all have incredible power. We've just been taught to dumb it down since we've been kids. So we have a lot of fear, a lot of ego, and a lot of misunderstandings. I want to change all of that. You know, we're moving into this Aquarian age, which is all, it's all going to be a love revolution, because it's going to be a more loving and accepting society, and it's going to be a society I believe a creator society where we're all creating for each other. So if you want to start manifesting that, you have to know who you are. So what are you going to create? How are you going to create your new world? So I just wanted to mention that because I thought the comment was so good and it was so interesting. So thank you. Um, and I don't want to name names, but she knows who she is and she's got a great personality type. Um, anyhow, let's get back to travel. So this week, I kind of want to unpack your personality type, uh, showing you that when you travel, you know, your travel choices so mirror your personality type. Interesting. Because obviously the choices you make are based on uh, aspects of your traits, you know, and we make choices through thinking and feeling, right? Especially for feelers, it's very emotional. For thinkers, it's logical. But then, that's just, that's very, mm, let's look at it through this really narrow scope. But that's not the whole truth because we all have other traits that uh, influence that. And we also have life experiences that influence it, that too. So you see, there's a lot that goes into this. We're, we're very complex. But, so as you start looking at uh, uh, vacations and making choices, I feel it's really important that you know your personality type because so many of us, um, my little Ollie's here with me, but so many of us, oh, there he is. He wants to, he wants to say hi. Okay, I'll make room for you. Um, but so many of us want to please and, and not get in to a scuffle with our better half or our kids or whatever. Um, and we don't speak up. And honestly, we don't know ourselves well enough to make a choice, the right choice, uh, to really fulfill our soul. And we can do this, you can definitely do this through uh, knowing your personality type. Okay. And let's, I'm gonna back up a little bit because I feel that every destination like you, has a soul essence. You can feel it. When you get off the plane, can you feel it? Can you feel the essence? Or when you ride into town, or when you start engaging with the shop owners, or you're just walking, can you feel the energy? You can if you're in tune to it. I know I can. I mean, a friend of mine just went somewhere and I was like, what the, what's the energy like? Well, I don't even ask what's around. The first thing I ask is what's the energy like? So it's not about what's the shopping? Is there a beach? No, none of that. None of that's important. I wanna know what the energy's like. And she's like, meh. Had kind of a flat energy. I'm like, yeah, okay. Don't want to go there. <laughs> I just know. I know my personality type. Now, for some people, that low kind of flat energy works for their type. It just does. 
you know? So you have to know that, but it's, to me it's an energy. So every place I believe has a soul energy. It has, it has a soul center. Here's the caveat. We as marketers, I grouped myself into that because I did marketing communications forever in the travel industry. We want to go in there and rebrand a destination and make it the hit place to be, the hit place to travel. So we go in there and we start changing things up. New things start moving in. New hotels, maybe new businesses, um, and that kind of thing. And it starts changing the soul essence of the place. You know, and countless examples. You know, look at look at Asheville, look at Nashville, look at Venice, Italy, look at Croatia, look at a lot of parts of Florida and a lot of parts of California. They've had this man-made influence on a destination which changes it. And oftentimes that destination goes into ruination. It just does. Um, I was thinking of Machu Picchu too. I mean, they had so many people in Machu Picchu climbing the stairs. The, the stairs are actually crumbling. It can't take two million people doing that. It's called over tourism. Over tourism. Over tourism. Too many tourists, right? And so that you, you get into a bad place. And then the place loses everything that it's its essence. Do you see a mirror of how we do that as, as a as a human being? That we try to rebrand ourselves so much to fit into society, whether it's pleasing our parents, whether it's some social aspects, you know, social media being this, doing this, I have to look like this, you know, I have to be this, uh, so forth and so on. We're influenced by medical systems, our government systems, our country culture. And, and you know, our, our careers, let's, you know, career typology for since the 1950s has been fit in. Be a hitter. What are your strengths and weaknesses? And what about your soul? Where's your soul in all that? Where's your soul? And what happened to the soul of the place? It's been lost. It's been lost. You've lost the essence of who you are. The destination has lost the essence of who it is. So when you start getting into a situation when you're traveling and you're traveling and you come across a situation where there's challenges um, and we all, this is going to happen and I'm kind of switching this up a little bit. So I'm going to talk about now how you, can you see the mirroring of a destination in your personality type, you know? So not only do we do that to ourselves, we do that to destinations. We do it to products. We do it to everything. We try to overthink the soul of what it is. And then we lose the soul of it. Just like that, we lose the essence of who we truly are, our true self. And we give our, when we give our true self away to someone else's expectations, they're authoring our life story. And that's when things get dangerous. I know, because I had a seven year tsunami and that's exactly what happened. So this is, it gets interesting, right? So now what if um, you're at a destination and it's triggering you, you know, it's challenging and you, you're seeing, you know, it's just, it's hard to get to and you're becoming overwhelmed and it's exhausting you. Um, maybe there's things you didn't realize about it when you got there and you're like, oh my God, I didn't know this, this, and this, because us, us marketers, we're good at like just showing you what we want you to see. You know, we do that with ourselves too. We put on our mask and only show the world what we want to see. There's lots of mirrors in this. There's a lot of reflecting in travel and personality typing. So, so you're at this destination and it starts triggering you, right? You're like, oh, why am I so anxious? Or, you know, you're getting angry about stuff or um, you're doing things that aren't, you don't do in your normal bubble life. That's why I call it your bubble life because we're kind of routine in our lives. And travel lets you step out. Travel lets you, uh, you're more uh, ready to take a risk. You're ready to walk into the unknown. You're ready to, um, you're ready to maybe try a new, a new food, a new restaurant. So, yeah. So, but then you have these triggers, and the triggers, to travel triggers to me, are aspects of your personality type that have become unhealthy. 
So we need to look at those triggers. I'll give you a couple examples here. First, I'll give you an example of me. I was went to Las Vegas and my life was very chaotic at the time. I wasn't slowing down. I was just pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing, um, just going and because I, I wasn't, I didn't want to stop and look at myself, right? So I was in this very chaotic lifestyle and I went to Vegas and it was just like, oh my God, stop. This is, was not working for me. I got so overwhelmed. It was grumpy. It wasn't a good time for me. I didn't have the tools right then to realize my personality type was so out of whack. You know, and even if, and even I was trying to get back to my spiritual self, it wasn't helping because I didn't, I couldn't align myself. I couldn't align the human aspect of me with my non-physical aspect because the human aspect was so out of whack. It was so untouchable. And you have to realize that the personality type and the soul, soul self, right? They won't interact if the personality type is fear-based. It's like oil and water. It just doesn't work. So I didn't realize that. So obviously really wasn't the location as much as it was me um, being very chaotic and not in touch with myself to help myself get over that anxiety, to slow myself down and do things that weren't chaotic. I just didn't do that. I did the opposite. I ran to the chaos, which isn't healthy. And here's another instance of um, a friend of mine, we, I think we were in Paris. We're in Paris, we're driving around the car, you know, Paris driving, you get a taxi, it's like, whoa. <laughs> crazy, it's crazy fun. And she's very, she can be very rigid. She's very, she has a, uh, a judging trait and a couple other traits that make her really want to be, stick to a schedule. She wants to be organized, she wants to be planned. And when that stuff derails for her, she does not like it because because those things help her be, be secure in herself because she knows. She likes that knowing that helps her feel secure. Right? So in this taxi cab, she's giving him all these directions, you know, and he's just looking at her and going, shut up, American, sit back in your seat. <laughs> you know, shut up. I know, I know where I'm going. So finally, she got kind of angry with him and he goes, Madame, I'm driving the taxi. I will get you to where you're going. You know, and he just shut her down. And I, I kind of don't blame him because she was kind of going off on him. And she looked at me, she goes, can you believe this? And I'm like, yeah, he kind of knows the city, so let's just, we'll get there, it's okay. You know, just, it's it's okay. She's been not listening to me. I'm like, he doesn't have to listen to you. She was so stuck in her own world and her old rigid ways, you know, that she couldn't for a minute think that somebody else could get us to where we need to go without this, you know, without her, her organization and her planning. So, um, tip the guy big, because she did kind of go off. It was okay, you know, but we got back and when we got checked into the hotel, you know, we sat down and uh, talked and I said, you know, I think part of that was, did you feel like you were losing control? And she's like, yeah, he wasn't listening to me. I'm like, but did he have to listen to you? And she's thought about it and she's like, I know, but I was trying to help him. She goes, I said, were you trying to help him? Or were you trying to give him what you wanted, your outcomes and your way of doing it? That's a personality trait that's, that's out of touch, that's out of balance, it's unhealthy. Because our way of doing things is not always the right way. Other people have their way of doing things and we have to accept that. So I had this conversation with her and she felt a lot better. She's like, oh, okay, I can kind of see that. I said, but he got us here, right? Yeah, but he didn't do it my way. But not everything has to be your way. And if everything's always your way, how are you going to discover the new things in life that, that can be brought to you? Because you're so stuck in your tunnel, you're not seeing everything around you. You have to open yourself up to those new experiences. And they're not always going to come through a rigid schedule. In fact, they're never going to come through a rigid schedule. Work will get done through a rigid schedule. And that's what makes her so good at, you know, doing the work for people. She's a manager and she just gets things done. Uh, which makes her excellent. But sometimes there's other ways and there's more efficient ways. So she kind of got it, right? She's like, okay, I get it. But can you see how travel can show you things about yourself that are unhealthy? So I hope you find this video uh, useful to you as you begin traveling. I know people are traveling already. Traveling starting to gear up again, which I'm happy for because I think I think travel is one of the best ways to 
set micro intentions of transformation. So travel transformation. I think it's really important. Um, and there's some other things in some other uh, things I cover in the blog. I talk about triggers and then I link some more things so you can understand, you know, triggers maybe on a different level too, because there's two sides to a trigger and I go into that and how it affects your personality type and, and you personally uh, and why spiritual practices are important for all this. So I hope you found this interesting. I think it's a fascinating study of looking at your personality type from such a different look-see than just a career thing, right? Because it's it touches every single thing. It should be a priority. Your travel personality or your personality type helps you expose your sacred purpose. It helps you align with your soul self. And when these two go together, you're a powerhouse, man. You are just a super powerhouse. And nobody's really teaching that. So I wanted to teach that. I just want to guide that. Just when you, really, I'm not really teaching you anything. I'm just waking you up to what already is. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting look-see to look and study. I'm in my new digs. Um, they're a little dark for me, but I'll get used to it. I know, look, I'm whining. I'm so, yes, I'm happy, blah, blah, blah. But I'm very light sensitive. So it is what it is. I had to say that because I just did. <laughs> That's just who I am. Um, so if you like this, please subscribe, hit the bell, hit the like button. If you want to share it with somebody that you know is going to be traveling and is a little discombobulated of, you know, oh my God, I, I, I thought I knew, but I don't know now. And what's going to be the best for me? Because we really want to travel and have the best experience possible. And knowing your travel personality type will deliver that to you. I guarantee you. I can tell you insights about yourself that'll, that'll waken you up before, you know, you get your passport stamped or before you put gas in your car, which is expensive right now. Um, <laughs> but it just, it just is. So anyway, thanks guys. I appreciate you taking the time and taking a look-see. Visit the blog. I'll have a link in the uh, description box so you can go there. And I'm wishing you safe travels and, and I'm wishing you transformational travels. And when you get triggered ne on your next vacation, please look at it as a gift from your soul, whispering to you, something in your personality needs to be explored further to give you better insights into your true self. Happy travels. Talk to you next week. All for now, Nina.